Hey, welcome back, folks. It's time for another Starbase Summary. Got a lot going on in this one. Booster 18 scrapping and rollbacks happening. We got some Gigabay construction, we'll see. Ship 39 on a status check. And then Booster 19 parts rolling in and out for stacking. We'll check in with the pads as well and the ASU over there at the launch side. But here up at the beginning, we saw Massey's, and here we've got some stands moving over to Massey's. Now, we're doing something a little bit different this time. Normally, we just put all the clips in the chronological order that they happen. But here we've uh, put them in sort of uh, groupings of the event that they're supporting. And we're starting off with these stands rolling out to Massey's in support of this Booster 18 scrapping operation. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at a lot of clips here of Booster 18 scrapping over a few different days. There's Booster 18 going off the test stand. It's been mostly cut down. You can see just a few rings remain at the bottom of it. And they're putting that stuff over on the transport stands, and they're getting it the heck out of Dodge. In fact, here is, that's very ambient Colleen. Look at that art she's making. Wow, looks like Colleen and Caesar were standing next to each other. Hope those watermarks were right. But there is that uh, new top section with that new thr thrust redirect. It's not the thrust redirector. The new uh, hot staging ring. It's not a hot staging ring anymore. It's like the hot staging section of the top of the booster. Whoa, got some raceway guts there it's also raining look at the look <laughs> wow the drops of water like rolling down the stainless steel there as they're rolling this thing out i'll be dang sorry that just like caught my eye all of a sudden you know how it goes like i watch the videos for the first time and i tell you what i think I, is cool or interesting and that water rolling down the stainless steel was straight up art but here you can see uh, exiting the area where the power lines go under the ground. You can see the power lines look like they end right there because they go underground so they can do this sort of thing exactly. And then there's that transfer stand. Of course, so this is the bottom of the booster where they can connect it into that transport stand with all the connection points on the bottom of the booster. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> Dude, that COPV, I hope that COPV is not pressurized. Uh, that internal tankage there on the side as well. Uh, that COPV is my thing, like... Certainly it's safe and it's it's not any danger being on that thing. Like they've released all the pressure from them. I just see a COP these, COPV these days and I'm like, yeah. God, you can see where it's just, I mean, there are cut marks. You can see where they cut it and you can see where it just unzipped. This really looks like the bottom of the unzip area because this is the booster stand, right? So this is the bottom of the booster and that's almost like uh, Maybe the root of the wound is not really the right way to say it, but it's the bottom of the tear, it looks like. Wow. God, you could just see where it sort of comes to a stop, and then it gets wider and wider, and then starts to fold out. It's like a, not really flowers of a... Petals of a stainless steel wounded flower? That sounds like a band name. A, re a really bad man name because the merch sales are tough. It's like, dude, I'm going to see Stainless Steel Wounded Flower tonight. Oh, I love them. Like that. It's, it's not a great band name, honestly. Uh, <laughs> maybe maybe there is a band called that. Sorry, if your band is actually called Stainless Steel Wounded Flower, um, I apologize. I, I didn't know you existed. I'm just talking off the cuff here. All right. <laughs> so this is where that stuff was headed. You can sort of see uh, the Gigabay rising, all the beams there. And the backside of the Sancha sort of assembly and scrapping area. You can see there the hot stage green lower right. right. And uh, there's the bottom of the booster, the lower left. Yeah, we're going to zoom in on it a little bit. You can see all of these different scrappity bits that they got out of the way so they can move forward. But again, everything here all sort of following around the scrapping of Booster 18 after its demise out at Massey's. It got basically unzipped and it is not anywhere near a flyable booster anymore. Up next, we're going to scroll back a little bit and look at some Gigabay construction here. So, a lot happening in this nighttime view. Are those beams just sort of hanging on. I mean, there's a guy up there working on the beams, but those beams are just... We're back to the, the OSHA mobile again, I guess. Oh, there it goes. Wow! The... This looks like it's real time because the, cause the, the zoom out illustrations seem uh, like real time, right? It just looks like the camera's moving in real time. That accelerated a lot faster than I thought it would. All of a sudden, those beams just zzz, like started getting yanked upwards. Saw a couple of sparks in there. I'd imagine, yeah, it looks like a welding spark. You can see the light, right, everywhere else. 
sort of reflecting off the ah there you go oh that's a neat welder if that's what that was it was like a gun welder I'm looking at laser welding equipment for my garage but I don't think the prices have dropped such that I really need a laser welding and welder in my garage I don't know any welders out there who've used any of that stuff it just looks too cool like but in any event, I don't I don't weld enough to actually need that. If I did it for a living, I'd probably look at one more. But that gun was really cool, honestly. Again, I like the little temporary uh, railings, I guess, like cable railings almost that they had in there. It says overhead work. Nice, no kidding. We've got the mask and the uh, goggles and the grinding shield, the face shield there. What if they were trimming something to fit? Like, ah, it's not a little bit... A little bit too long. We're going to trim it down a little bit or something. Wow, there's that. See, do you know something? I really need to, I need to watch this entire operation. Like, do they string those things up like that because they attach one and then the other ones are already in position? They just attach the next one? I wish that clip was a little longer so I could see if, if that's... Why do they string them in mobiles? I've never seen that context here. In any event, there's Ship 39 looking back up the aisle again. Tiles looking super clean. I like those little, the little decorative tiles in the middle, like the smaller tiles here. We're going to go all the way down. That is a fine-looking ship, y'all. That is a fine-looking starship. Oh, it almost pixeli it pixelizes, pixelates the, uh, the beams around it. You can almost see in low resolution like you applied a Photoshop filter that made hexagons out of your art or something. That's that reflection you're sort of seeing. That's really cool. And then there's the little tiles. You see the little tile section and the big tile section. The hexagons are sort of growing. You see more and more of those hexagons uh, everywhere. You'll see more and more of them in the NSF store in the new year as well. So we're going to move on and we're going to look at some Booster 19 work. We had a section going in. There's a transfer tube section as well. It's wearing a hat. It's not really a hat, it's more of a coif, but whatever. Uh, and then here, I think we get the entire transfer tube. I saw this on Starbase Live. Yeah, there you go. Remember, the transfer tube is almost the size of a Falcon 9. It's way in the background. It looks smaller because these workers are in the foreground and they're compressed a little bit. Uh, but that is a big piece of equipment back there on the far side. It's outside of the construction zone. Oh, no way. Well, that, okay. We get to see it get lifted. And a beam get lifted at the same time. This is how they do it. They're like building the rocket in the background at the same time that they're building a facility to build more rockets in the foreground. And two things getting verticated all at the same time. That's too cool. All right. So back out of the launch pad here, we're seeing the pad two chopsticks being rotated. I had to stall for a second there while I looked at the pad, but it's really obvious because pad two has the angular structure where the actual launch pad is. And pad one has nothing now except a, like an empty area with a bunch of scrap. I think last video we saw this hood come off, and it looks like we're seeing the hood come back on now, or go back on now. They're doing some work in there. It was just easier to not have that hood in place, and now that they've done the work, I don't know, like elbow room, right? You ever changed a fan belt in a minivan? Yeah, I would I would take the hood off. It wouldn't really help you in a minivan to take the hood off, but whatever. Same general concept, I guess. All right, Caesar getting a nice nighttime shot of pad two here, looking sort of straight in the gate. This is from Highway 4, sort of looking in. Ah, that lighting just looks cool. How it's all lit up inside and then outside, it's like the muted stainless steel with the more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like the more diffused lighting on the outside. Hey, look, it's Wiley. We haven't seen Wiley Coyote in a while. He's going to go over there and he's going to strap an Acne rocket onto the uh, pad too and see how far he can get after the Roadrunner. Oh, had some foggy days out there, but there's a deluge test, some water happening. Just a little little spurt, very exciting. Neat. That really, you know, it seems like it, was that another, was that a bird flying across the bottom, or was that another coyote running at high speed? Something went really fast through the grass down there. Okay, so if you have a, a 3D printer or a CNC, you've seen these cable chains before. I think I've mentioned that in the past, but uh, these movable chains that protect the cabling, wiring, maybe some hoses in there. I don't actually know if there's hoses. As the chopsticks move up and down, you need the electronics to be connected, right? So you need some sort of system by which you can 
you can move those cables up and down. There, they're just, wow! I love the stop-motion animation. They are really going to town on that old foundation, just digging everything out. Look at this. So this is over at Pad 1 again, and we're just doing some, uh, some, let's put it lightly, we're doing a lot of demolition work. Those big jackhammers just tearing it up. Got a cool ambiance shot here of the lights flashing around Pad 1. Look at that. You know, the, the craziest thing is you can go and you can stand where Caesar is standing in weather like this, and you can, like, feel that ambiance at Starbase. You can't do it at the Cape. You can't, you can't get wallops, you can't get that close to it. You can go stand at the ferry docks, and it's, like, cold and misty or whatever, and there's the wildlife place in front of you or whatever. But standing that close to that big tower and getting that fog and the lighting effect and stuff like that, it's, it's really crazy. Now, okay... Back to the ASU, we've been looking at this. I was watching it uh, for the last couple of days, and it looks like they made a measurement mistake. I don't know, they poured a bunch of concrete, and it's got the insulation stuff in the middle of it, but then they came back and they just demoed a bunch of it, and they've, they're have sort of like working. I think they're trying to chop out the insulation there in the middle, and then the rebar is just sticking out. Like I, I wonder what happened here. So they, they put the... IMU in upside down, or was one thing in metric and the other thing was in imperial, or like what the problem is, I don't know. Uh, Chat was saying they're pretty sure that they could fit this turbo under the hood of their insert favorite muscle car or truck. I don't know, look at the size of the turbo compared to that truck. That's, I think, going over to the ASUs, and it's got a few stages on it so they can have different uh, compression, different, different pressures, I think, is the output of that thing. There's some cryo tests happening over at Massey's. A little bit tough because they do close that road, so you really can't get too close to Massey's. Of course, you don't want to be close to Massey's when they're doing stuff like that. Cough, cough, booster 18. Uh, but just got some general cryo test work that was happening over that way. Wow. This is rough. You can see, just <laughs> if you can pause the video for a second, you can see the frost that's formed on the outside of that tank and the wind blowing, shaking the camera on the tower here. There, it looks like that frost was melting Caesar in a little bit of a uh, more gentle position. Looks like Caesar was a little bit uh, either a different time of day because I don't see the same frost there, right? I wonder if this is even the same thing. I'm not entirely sure. It might have been the next day or something like that. But uh, in any event, just moving right along. Getting that next booster ship tested so they can keep going. It looks like we're going to end with the drone test here. This was over at South Padre Island. Uh, it doesn't look like it's facing the camera, but that's a booster being caught over at the tower. Folks, appreciate you. Let us know down in the comments. It was a little bit different organization for the video, but as always, appreciate you watching, and we will see you nerds later.